Hello everyone, and welcome to Sewer Infiltration to Asset Rehabilitation, an end-to-end -end roadmap for action webinar. I'm Sean Taylor. Before I introduce our speakers, I would like to welcome and encourage you to engage with our experts today by using the Q&A box located in the right corner of your GoToWebinar interface. We will try to answer as many questions as possible during the last 15 minutes. Please note that all phone lines will be muted during the webinar. Later, we will send an email with a link to watch the webinar on demand. Now, I'd like to introduce our speakers. David Totman, Vice President of Asset Management at Innovise, Chuck Hansen, Chairman and Chief Executive Officer at ElectroScan, and Tim Medeiros, Systems Engineer at Innovise. David Totman is the Vice President of Asset Management for Innovise, providing strategic direction for infrastructure systems management across the entire Innovise product line. He has been in the water industry just under 40 years and has applied geospatial technology to business process optimization, project analytics, and full life cycle infrastructure management for over 30 years. Prior to Innovise, he was the global water industry manager for Esri and served as the asset manager for Colorado Springs Utilities, one of the largest municipally owned for service utilities in the USA. His state government service included water quality and water rights adjudications. He is a member of the American Water Works Association and the American Society of Civil Engineers. As an officer in the American Society of Engineers, he holds the title of past president of the Utility Engineering and Surveying Institute. Chuck Hansen is the chairman and CEO of Sacramento-based ElectroScan Incorporated and a former chair of ASTM F36-20, overseeing standards for inspection and renewal of water and wastewater infrastructure. An original founder of Hansen Information Technologies in 1983, Chuck had over a million CCTV reports in Hansen databases from over a dozen different international rating standards when he sold Hansen in 2007. Chuck received his BSc from US, UC Berkeley and MBA from UCLA. Tim Medeiros is a system engineer at Innovise. He joined Innovise in July 2016 after completing his master's with research in hydrology and industrial water treatment. With Innovise, Tim has spent time as a member of the support and technical service team, as well as the sales team. He has worked extensively with Innovise's asset management software and is assisted in training, implementation, and support with hundreds of Innovise customers around the world. David, I will hand it off to you now. Yeah, hey, uh, uh, thanks, John. Uh, good morning and good afternoon, everyone, uh, depending upon which uh, side of the United States you're joining us or, or even globally. Uh, Sean said, my name's David Tobin, Vice President of Asset Management here at Innovise. And I hope everyone's staying uh, safe and staying at home, you know, kind of during this unprecedented time. Uh, we at Intervise, you know, we're all working from home now and still answering telephone calls and making calls and using webinars like today's, you know, to communicate our exciting story uh, on how we are leveraging Intervise technologies um, to bring on new users and, and new solutions. Um, you know, today uh, we're excited to showcase one of our newest partners, uh, Electroscan Inc and their founder and CEO, Chuck, uh, who I've known for quite some time. He's here with us today to talk about uh, integrating their data in uh, with the Innovise platform. Um, and actually, before I turn it over to Chuck, uh, I'd like to start off with a polling question about our topic today. Um, Sean, can you uh, launch our first poll, please? Thank you, David. And our first question here, do you currently have an active I and I mitigation program? Our responses are yes, we are happy with our current program. Yes, and we are seeing great results with ElectroScan. Yes, but mitigation could be better. No, we do not and would like to learn more. And finally, don't know or I and I is not an issue. We'll leave the polls open for about 30 seconds and then share the results. Thank you. Yeah, so our, our, our topic today is, is definitely about I and I, uh, leakage and you know infiltration and inflow. Um, just all the different aspects, which th those effectively, you know, are, are indicators of condition of of your of your mains um 
but it's also something you don't want excessive I and I because you don't need to, to treat, you know, rainwater, so to speak. So let's see, what are those results? All right. Fantastic. Yeah, 30% of you said yes, but mitigation could be better. Another 30% responded with no, we do not and would like to learn more. 22% said don't know or I and I is not an issue. 11% responded with yes, we are happy with our current program. And finally, 8% said yes, and we are seeing great results with ElectroScan. All right. Well, yeah. Uh, hey, thanks, Sean. That uh, you know, some some interesting results. I and, and kind of all over the all over the board. I'm I'm glad to see folks have, you know, active uh, I and I programs. That's that's really important. Um, and you know, obviously, our job here is to to help you with those results and and hopefully get the most the most effectiveness out of if you will out of your uh, uh, your mitigation program. So. Um, yeah, uh, Chuck, what do you uh, what do you think about those those polls? Hey, David, thanks for having me. I think the poll says it all. I think uh, you know whether whether it's from climate change or uh, the type of in, uh, rehabilitation is not really delivering kind of what what, what it needs to be. Um, I think I think uh, you know taking a look at uh, at how we mitigate infiltration, I think is going to be a uh, you know that's why that's why we're here. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, you know, I, th I think, you know, Sean kind of definitely uh, spilled the beans in the intro there, you know, so, so you are the, the one and only Chuck Hansen from uh, Hansen Software. Yeah, that's, uh, that's it. You know, I, I tried to retire after 2007 and selling the company, but uh, I guess I just wasn't through with this, uh, this wonderful industry that we're all in. <laughs> well, uh Glad to have you back, and 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 welcome to the to the Innovise family of partners. Great, thanks. So, um, well, yeah, well, go ahead. Sorry. No, I just uh, look. One of the things I I really liked. I was I was chasing after Paul Bulos for years, trying to be part of that family. So it's good to be part part of that, and uh, having our data inside the Innovise uh, platform. So that there's a whole uh, decision tree that I don't have to write for software. So you're doing me a huge, a huge favor having such a great product to work with. Oh well, well you're welcome, and and clearly you're you're giving our users, our customers, uh, you know, just a, a completely new viewpoint, um, you know, for them to kind of took, take a look at condition. And, and truth be told, um, having you guys in there, it, it's helping us. Now we can compare and contrast data and actually start to understand what you've been talking about all along about effectiveness. So uh, thrilled to have it. Um, you know, kind of in, in that regards, um, you know, a lot of our, a lot of, many of our longtime users of, of InfoMaster uh, and which is now Info Asset Planner, um, you know, they've, they've relied on CCTV data for condition assessment of their sewer mains, I mean, for, for years, for decades. Um, ElectroScan doesn't really eliminate that CCTV inspection, right? I mean, ElectroScan and FEL testing, isn't that like, that's just, that's an additional piece of information to make decisions about, right? Yeah, you know, I, 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 put, I mean, the short answer is yes, it does eliminate CCTV, uh, especially when you're looking to, to do three things. Hunt for infiltration, where are the sources, very focused on that. Uh, measuring the water tightness of, of a lot of the trenchless pipes that we've got out there, especially cured in place pipe, uh, and then also determining uh, lateral reinstatements uh, and, and making sure that they don't leak more than they did before we rehab them. So I think what we're going to see today is you're going to see a lot of, a lot of, uh, of overwhelming data uh, of why that is a very specialized thing. So TB still has a lot of useful applications, collapses, looking at construction debris, fat soils and greases, protruding laterals, um, uh, 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 roots. It's great, but when it comes to finding where the leaks are and infiltration, not really the best tool to use for investigation. So, you know, we all, when we look at condition, we always try to establish a, you know, a, a baseline. Um, so, uh, you know, is, is, is fell kind of on top of that baseline or in place of that baseline? Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's almost using, you've got to use the right tool for the right job. You know, when I was sitting on the ASTM committee um, uh, overseeing, uh, uh, you know, new inspection devices, we approved 
both of the laser profiling. Uh, we approve the acoustic. So it's really using the right tool for the right job. You wouldn't use a hammer uh, when you need a torque wrench. So, um, you know, today we're going to take a look at some of the examples for that, uh, how uh, a fell compares to CCTV and looking uh, for infiltration. Uh, you know, a big thing is looking at cracks and joints. If, if, if I'm looking at a TV and the crack, I can't, if I can't tell whether it's a superficial crack or a crack that goes through the pipe, I'm going to have a trouble. I'm going to have trouble deciding how that's going to be treated in my decision curve. Uh, the same thing goes with a joint. Uh, if I if I know whether that joint leaks or not, does water flow through that bell and spigot? I'm going to want to look at that too. So it really has everything to do with how we're going to design that next generation decision tool to make the right decision and fix the pipe and have a feedback loop to know we're doing the right job. Yeah. Well, and, and doesn't that kind of get at the root of the problem? I mean, we of of you know one of the things that we do with InfoAsset Planner is we we kind of we we prescribe a rehabilitation program, but it's 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 very much based upon that input data, right? So there's almost a cascade effect of of you know once we understand what data we're trying to assess, how that how that comes out to the recommended rehabilitation, right? Like you say, it's that full circle. Yeah. You know, it's uh, I, I hate to use the, the, the 70s terminology. Uh, you know, it's garbage in, garbage out, uh, you, you know. So and look, I know you 40 years in the industry, you know, uh, folks don't know. I, I actually helped do the do the first mainframe uh, sewer work order application in the 70s. So, you know, I've had a lot of work done as you have. I'm 64. So, uh, you know, been, we've both been at this for a lot of years. So there's uh, there's going to be new things and and really the challenge for the industry is how do you integrate those new things as we go forward yeah uh don't make me get my slide rule out you know um <laughs> yeah so you know i i guess um y you know what comes into part of i think what you'll be talking about too is you know we we kind of have to we have we have the the inspection information um, our decision trees help prescribe, you know, recommended um, rehabilitation. But you know, once we and once we do the rehab, there's there's also kind of a you know a, a contractor component, right? When they, you know, after the rehab, you kind of have to inspect uh, that the rehab is actually what what you know you plan for, designed for, paid for, actually. And so you're expecting, you know, to to get you know, to get that, that uh, delivered result. Um, thoughts about that? I, I, I think you're absolutely right. I think, I think making sure, it, it, I, I think the, the buzzwords today are governance, stewardship of the asset. Um, and I think, I think after cities kind of get, get to kind of what we're combining together, I, I think they're going to want to use Innovize as the single platform for that feedback loop, that QAQC to make sure that they've not only done the right rehab, but but have 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 actually gotten the the expected result and and the rehabilitation effectiveness out of that as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I mean, we we've we've been kind of looking at you know clearly looking at the data, looking at CCTV, looking at, at the FAL, you know, and, and as you kind of mentioned, there's just certain you know certain codes that that stand out like um, you know uh, TFA that factory actives, right? That's that's clearly a uh, a CCTV thing, but you know, making sure the visual piece is different than the actual kind of the the integrity piece, right? I mean, it's it's not like you know those things uh, leak or anything, or, or or even our operations folks doing maintenance, you know, affect those, right? I mean, that that never happens. Yeah, no, no, never. I can't. Uh, you know, we might see we might see a little bit of that in the in the coming uh, uh, slides here. So we'll 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 uh, we'll highlight that as it comes up. Well, uh, take it away. It's your show. Well, you know, I think what we've I think what we've seen is is uh, uh, you know you're seeing now I think the typical roadmap of infiltration that we've done a lot of years. Um, I cut my teeth on the big Houston project the first time they were up on EPA consent degree back in the 90s. We did uh, you know 60 plus thousand uh, manhole inspections and then we did smoke testing and dye flood testing, TVing uh, all the information, coming up with that data, doing the expert system, and that was back. That was back when uh, lining was done by, you know, the family businesses like uh, Will Naylor and, and uh, Jim Witt with, uh, uh, with Insitiform Gulf South and coming with that and then actually doing that and seeing how, how effectively that was done. 
Um, and there really hasn't been that much of a, a reason to change the way we've been doing things. The problem with that is, is we get the same old thinking, it gives us the same old uh, results for that. Um, uh, unless, unless, of course, you've been doing all this and you're still getting the same answer in the field. And you just take, you just take a couple of examples, whether you're a small city uh, that's got, that's got uh, a three MG, MGD uh, average plant uh, that doubles during a wet weather event, uh, or you're a six, or you're you're hitting 600 MGD on an average day. That's a 300 uh, uh, MGD as the average. So I think we're seeing persistent levels of infiltration. Um, it's anybody's opinion why we're seeing those things, but but it's it's uh, it, it's it's now kind of a driver of what we're looking for. And and I kind of call it the perfect storm. Uh, you know, as we as we look at the drivers today. Uh, I think we're gonna we're gonna just uh, talk a little bit about each each of these just for housekeeping. We may go quickly through these things. Um, email us, David or myself. We'll be happy to give you uh, uh, copies of uh, the complete slide stack. But we're gonna go through each one of these and throw in a poll as we go in. Um, talking about the the elephant in the room, COVID nineteen. Uh, uh, again, I've been around been around a while with David. I've I've never I've never seen. Uh, the, the tragedy uh, and, and just the shocking uh, results that uh, COVID has given us. So we, we heard yesterday, uh, now more deaths than the Vietnam War. Uh, so, so that's just, uh, it's just uh, implausible. It's just, it, it escapes, um, uh, you know, really kind of thinking about the, the impact of those things. Um, understand that tomorrow new jobless records are going to come in. We're going to have, we could very well hit top 30 million. Last week it was 26 million. So, just a number of things that are happening. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was I was on. Uh, I'm taking some some other courses uh, down at Stanford. So two of my favorite professors, Bob Sutton and uh, and Huggy uh, 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 Rao, uh, were giving a, a Stanford on, online uh, thing. They, were, they had they actually had 110 countries on there, and it was interesting. One of the things they they talked about was uh, this is actually a time, even though it's such a trying time, uh, and the topic was how to be a good boss. It was really asking yourself as a boss or a team leader, what are we doing? What are we What are we doing over and over that we should stop doing? Um, and, and really, it's I, I think now is the, is coming up with we ought to stop doing TV inspection if it doesn't give us the right answers or it's not giving us the information that we need. Um, uh, again, TV a great uh, application when the problem is obvious. Uh, using this kind of COVID nineteen illustration this is what we call a true positive uh, i see a problem i can write down the problem the problem really comes when it's not so obvious and this is really the other 90 percent of your system so uh, and i picked these examples all because whether the camera is underwater or we've got a, a, a joint uh, every one of these were found to have major leaks this is what's called a false negative so if we pass by and give a clean bill of health for a joint that that is actually leaking that data going into a decision tree uh, uh, may may not be the right thing that we look at um and it and it really kind of makes sense but if we if we just take a look at that one example that i talked about earlier where you know cracks with video very tough to tell in the upper right hand corner uh is that a superficial crack or is that crack go all the way through the pipe wall if I had a laser look at that, um, lasers typically will look at ovality, ovality of the pipe. That's uh, good information to use, uh, but it can't tell whether that crack goes through the pipe wall. Uh, sonar, uh, you, you know, is going to tell me what the debris feel is, but again, it's not going to tell me where the, where the leak is for that. Um, and it really comes down to just how these assets are constructed and the, and the reason for this. It's, it's obvious why we can't get that information from a visual inspection tool because we have we would have to stop uh, at each joint pan tilt and zoom just to capture maybe 10 percent of that bell and spigot um we can't really uh, uh look up into that that bell and spigot and and make that 90 degree turn to visually see is there a pathway for water to come in or come out of the pipe so uh having that kind of information Passing a joint that we shouldn't um, really is going to be problematic, uh, and it and it actually gets worse. Here's a here's a typical liner. The dye is just dripping directly into 
the beaker. Um, TV passed, passes this like it does so many. TV inspection, video inspection, does not have the capability of really examining the perma permeability. Um, can we have water go through that? And uh, whether they're felt liners or whether it's a, it's a UV cured fiberglass, um, we definitely have that issue going on. So the technology that, that kind of got me back in the business was to look for an alternative. Um, how could we really take uh, the visual work that we'd had and kind of move that forward uh, and get a couple of standards going in there? And so, and so in, in looking at how we use, how we force electric current in, really it's a process of just finding where the holes are. Uh, we calculate the size of the hole and through calculus we'll determine an estimated GPM on that. So it's really the science of low voltage conductivity. And it's, um, it's really the first true positive machine intelligent that gives us an unbiased look at 360 degrees of a pipe. The other good news is what it does for CIPP. Here you've got, a, here you've got just this low voltage current that in one spot is seeing if current passes through the liner. If there's no current that's able to pass, that's a, good, that's a good liner. If I'm conducting electricity, which I shouldn't, it's a one-to-one -one correlation of electrical flow versus water flow. It happens every time. It's just the science of low voltage electrical current. I'm gonna have a bad CIPP. What ElectroScan essentially has done is it, it, is, it has adapted this so it works at a 360 degree pipe for the full length. Um, and then we hit on connections. TAP connections. And this is where it's almost more important to find and confirm that the TAP connection has no leakage. Don't get me started into the laterals. You know, that's the, that's the pipe that goes from the main onto the service connection. I know there's a raging debate on, gee, this is where we have the, in, in, uh, the uh, infiltration coming from. Sorry, but the initial uh, readings that we've done over the last 10 years shows that these laterals really aren't the problem. We've got the low hanging fruit. We found the inflow component of this by, by having those drain pipes that are connected to the sewers and the missing drain caps. I'm talking about right at the connection. And if we find a tap connection that doesn't have a leak, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that it doesn't leak after rehab. Uh, the safety is all, always an issue. Uh, you know, you take a look at a lightning bolt that comes down, a single lightning bolt is about five billion joules of, a, of energy that come down. Um, uh, that all dissipates within about 30 feet. Compare that to ElectroScan with about six AA batteries, that will dissipate in about 30 inches. So the chances of having it follow water all the way up just, just doesn't exist. It's scientifically an impossibility. Uh, yeah, at, at Colorado Springs, we, you know, electric and water usually didn't mix. So yeah, that's right. Good to know. Good to know. But here's what we want to take a look at is, is when we're coming back and when we're having to open up those laterals for relining. And if you take a look at the, the video on the left, we're, we're chewing up this thing pretty much over the last 40 years that we've been reopening these things. Some of these have not been as precise as possible. And if you look at the, at the, at the post lined pipes below it and the annular space, we're still having the same amount of water percolate down through the host pipe hitting that shrunken uh, 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 inner lined pipe through that annular space. So it's no surprise it comes right through. So if I'm actually making a bigger hole, then I can actually find CIPP today now leaking more, even if I've eliminated all of the joint leakage. I've made bigger holes at all the laterals. If I've got a lot of laterals in the pipe, I'm gonna have a problem. So. You know, kind of any of this section on a, on a Maynard Keynes quote, the, the difficulty lies not in new ideas, but escaping from the older ones. Uh, it's, uh, it's really time to, to, to look at that. And this brings us to our next polling question. Has CCTV been your only sewer condition asset assessment tool? Our first response is yes, we only use CCTV and are pleased with the results. Yes, but we are interested in using FEL. No, we actually use CCTV and FEL. No, we use a different inspection methodology. And finally, don't know or have nothing at all. Leave the polls open here for another 30 seconds and then share the results. Thank you. Yeah, I'm kind of curious out there who who's, who has nothing at all, actually, you know? 
Uh, well, you know, I think, I mean, we have about 100 uh, electric scan units out there. I think there, there are uh, at least 25,000 plus PD uh, rigs. Plus, we've got a lot of manual ones, so it's um, uh, you know it's it's interesting to see see what we uh, what we'll get. Okay. And here oh, are we the have results. A... Yeah, uh, thirty-eight percent said yes, but we are interested in using Fell. Another twenty-two percent said yes, we only use CCTV and are pleased with the results. Fourteen percent said no, we actually use CCTV and Fell. Thirteen percent said don't know or have nothing at all, and finally twelve percent responded with no. We use a different inspection methodology. Thank you. And 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 for those that that use something different altogether, um, you know, please uh, drop me a line, um, or Chuck and I would love to understand what's uh, what what's being used uh, there in the industry. So, absolutely. Kind of going on to the the, the second part in here, and it's it's uh, it, it really talks about uh, you know the infiltration getting worse, not better. Uh, you know, we've got this pandemic. It almost reminds me. I mean, today it's almost like the 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 four horsemen of the apocalypse. We've got pandemic, we've got death, we've got interruption of our food supply, we've got flooding, and of all things, wet weather infiltration uh, into sewer is one of the top causes for that. So as the, as the sewers fill up, they'll fill up the basement and go on. Um, and and what we're actually finding is weather is 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 getting wetter, not drier. And uh, here's an interesting chart that I that I came over the last hundred years, uh, uh, in, or the, the the years from 1900 to 2000 in Philadelphia, and then taking a look at the rainfall from 2000 to 2020, uh, it's it's been night and day. Uh, and the other thing that we're finding is that it takes uh, very little rainfall. In this case, we go back to Labor Day last year in Philadelphia near the rain near the airport. We had less than a quarter of an inch, causing a nine times uh, flow at the treatment plant. So, and this is not just a U.S. Uh, uh, a problem. Uh, you know, in places where you would never think you'd have a problem like this, with Abu Dhabi, Dubai. Here's a picture of Doha uh, in in, uh, in Qatar. I was I was in the city when we had just a, a brief rainfall, uh, and the complete uh, and the streets were completely flooded on, on here. So. It doesn't, it doesn't take much today to actually cause those issues. Um, we were, Rich Cummings at uh, Hillsborough, I don't know if Rich is on the call, hi Rich, uh, was on the call. Uh, we worked with Rich kind of uh, you know, looking at cell for about 30 miles in this area. Uh, surprise, surprise, Innovise and Info uh, uh, Asset Planner was a big uh, 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 part of our investigation for that data. But it also looked at combining uh, CCTV data as well. Uh, there was about 30, 33,000 feet that we compared it to, and we, we looked at uh, uh, defects, and we looked at ours. And, and we saw, yeah, that's the number. Five defects called out for TV for this 33,000 feet compared to fell. Uh, on sewer mains for the same 33,000 feet. If we take every category that could be influenced by infiltration, um, so, so looking at joints, cracks, fissures, uh, at liners, the, the taps, roots, only 14. Um, now, granted, the majority of these pipes were plastic pipe. That's a little bit difficult for, for CCTV, but uh, a very dramatic uh, look at that. But if we, if we just take a look at, at, at a single pipe comparison, where we would see TV call out a bad tap on one of the lines, and we would compare that to fell in looking at the other taps that were there. So not only do we need to know where the bad taps are, but where good taps are so that when we rehab this line, we've got a real, a true baseline to know what we want to reduce, what we want to kind of get rid of. Um, and this is not just an American thing. It's uh, as I've watched, um, as I've watched the, the amps uh, over in Europe, uh, over in uh, the UK, uh, we just started AMP7. Um, AMP7 is no joke. I, I was fortunate enough, David, we, David and I were over in uh, the Innovise yep. User Conference yep. in Birmingham, um, and there was there was uh, there was there was a, a fright on some of the some of the speakers just looking at some of the requirements that the that the um, that Offwatt is uh, is requiring off these things. Um, and I am, I'm adding this in just because I think it's, a, it's an agency we have to watch. 
Um, uh, it, it's probably one of the best run agencies around uh, down in Australia with Sydney Water. Um, but it's amazing to see how they have now taken a regional approach. Uh, they have been working hard almost the last, uh, I, I think they're four months out of six months. They're going to be, I believe, starting July 1, uh, having these regional consortiums, these third parties now that will be taking over this. And it's, it's, seeing, it's seeing how they're looking at uh, what the utility is expecting from a cap, CapEx and how that market is going to supply it. So I think we're going to have a lot of good examples of that. And, and, and again, uh, I just want to close kind of this section now by saying that there's, a, a, again, a lot of good uses for CCTV. I think we're going to see TV uh, change. And we're already seeing a change uh, in getting added to uh, jet uh, hoses so that we can actually jet up take the camera off and actually jet down, right back down with a, a electric scan fell unit. So we can kind of look at that. We make sure there's no obstructions. We make sure there's no a risk in there. Um, the, the number one thing I like about TV and where AI can really help, and it helps now, is where are the taps? Greatest, greatest uh, way to update my GIS. So in this section, I'm just gonna finish off by a uh, famous Steve Jobs saying, you've gotta, you've gotta have a wrong that you wanna write Otherwise, you're not going to have the perseverance to stick it through. Um, and, and trying to kind of get a hold on some of the infiltration, I think, is where we, where we want to be. Great. And that brings us to our next polling question. Are you using CIPP as a rehabilitation solution? Responses are yes, we use CIPP and are happy with the results. Yes, but aren't meeting our INI reduction goals. No, we use a different trenchless technology. No, we dig and replace. And finally, don't know. We'll leave the polls open for about 30 seconds and then share the results. Thank you. So I was, I was talking to, as we answered the question here, I was talking to Henry Gregory, who, who I think spent a billion dollars on CIPP in Houston. And um, uh, I definitely had an opinion on, on what, was, what they did right uh, and maybe what they could have done a better job doing uh, coming up on this next uh, series of, um, of uh, consent decrees that we may be under. So uh, we'll kind of, Talk about that a little bit next. And yeah, it looks like we had some great responses here. So 46% oh, of you oh. said yes, we use CIPP and are happy with the results. 31% said yes, but aren't meeting our I and I reduction goals. 11% responded with don't know. 8% said no, we use a different trenchless technology. And finally, 5% said no, we dig and replace. Thank you. Yeah. Great, and kind of our third section, we'll just kind of blast through this a little bit. The CIPP, very common. It's been around for forever and a day, uh, you know, since the 70s when it first came out of the UK. Uh, I and that's how long, yeah, yeah, Colorado Springs is a big user for that, as, as do a lot of people. Um, and, and I've just got to say that the problem is new CIPP liners can and do frequently leak. Um, here's a picture of a new pipe uh, in, in Virginia. And you can three, see those three telltale infiltration stains um, where the water's already seeping through. And um, you know, whether, they're, whether they're categorized, we, I know that we've got uh, some, some call outs. Uh, unfortunately, the majority of call outs we see after a post CIPP really has been uh, uh, all zeros. And um, this is one of my favorites. I call this 7030. Uh, this is actually a video of 70 leaks, 70 pinhole leaks. And look carefully, you can see the infiltration stains in many of the cases, 70 infiltration stains leaks into 30 feet of new pipe. This pipe is 30 days old. So the, the chances of these things putting in is a, is a, is a, is a real definite thing. Um, and then as we look at uh, the, the lateral connections, um, we're now seeing kind of the best and brightest engineering firms deliver customer heat maps. What do we mean by that? Well, uh, we take a look at the, at the middle map. Uh, we've actually got some poke and hope here. These are, hey, we didn't know where the lateral is. We're going to poke into it. Many of these were, were grouted, um, and uh, we could not only either see visual water through, we saw fell leaks uh, that had it. Zero CCTV. So this heat map you see on the right-hand side, though, is actually a great example of, of w what did the tap leak before CITP. And you see where the check mark is, the, the, the deepest red is where we had zero leakage on a lateral before CITP, but yet after CITP, we actually had issues. 
Uh, and again, having that rotating uh, blade uh, in a six to eight inch, 10 inch pipe, what could possibly go wrong? And so, um, you know, that's an issue we have to take a look at. Uh, and we, uh, we are now looking at, uh, well, if we do have those things, what do we let go? How long, is, how long should we keep that pipe? So we're now coming up with new definitions through the help of some early adopters for ElectroScan, like in Roseville, we're taking a look at, at looking at once a year and seeing what is the impact of those early identified uh, pinholes, uh, what is the impact of, of wet weather events, how those pinholes are getting bigger over the time. Um, so here you see two scans, 643 days. Notice how the major scans are precisely located at the same location, 600 days. This is just the benefit of science. This is just, this is just what the benefit of machine technology does for you. But now we have these other creeping effects of problems in the letter that we saw before. Um, and we're seeing those all over the world. Here's something from uh, Sweden. We're now seeing some of the papers coming in at some of the international conferences, 25 liners showing a 60%, 66% uh, failure rate. Um, and this is not just for liners. Uh, we've actually been taking a look at new clay pipe. And when I say new clay pipe, I mean the ones with gasketed ends, whether it's an open end or a, a, a bell and spigot, and taking a look at those. Um, and I'm not so sure, seeing some of the defects I read on new clay pipe, I'm not so sure as some of the old clay pipe that we're now seeing, I'm almost, I've got to wait until I have another a couple of million feet of new I'm almost convinced that many of the bad clay pipe we're seeing now probably looked that way within a week that they were put in. Because we're now finding out people that are actually putting in clay pipe today, it's fine, it pressure tests, it's fine when they actually install it, when they cover it with dirt, it has trouble passing uh, a leak test, and so we're called in. Um, also, Barbara, I don't know if you're on the phone. Hi there, Barbara. Barbara's up in Ontario, very interesting two-year study on, on unacceptable II readings in new subdivisions just found with flow monitoring uh, after these subdivisions were put in. So I think we're going to see a lot of QAQC. The need to have that feedback loop, uh, I think, has never been greater. So, so when we leave this thought with this section with the definition of mindset, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results. Is, is kind of where we've been with the technologies. One I more got, section to got go. got my man Einstein in the back there. <laughs> okay, yeah. Sean, we got, we got another poll question. Oh, great. Thank you, Chuck. And that brings us to our next polling question. Who certifies your new and rehabilitated pipes as leak-free? Our responses are outside engineering firm, municipal field crews, independent contractor, and finally, contractor that installs the new pipe also tests the pipe. We'll leave the uh -oh. polls open for 30 seconds and then share the results. Thank you. Not to influence, that should be, next year we're gonna have Innovise uh, uh, Info Asset Planner on that list. <laughs> so David, well, there have, does, does Innovise have any other uh, 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 API application programming interface directly into a cloud database other than ElectroScan and Critical Sewer. Do, do you have any other uh, APIs with any other vendor today? On 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 the CMMS side, yes, we do. Um, okay. You know, so, so connecting to enterprise asset management systems, uh, uh, we do. Um, but yeah, okay. we're we're uh, the door is open for our partnering program, and we're really excited to to have uh, new innovative technologies uh, come into our data feeds. And well, that's great. And that. Oh, I'm sorry, Sean. Oh, no, you're okay. Uh, just to share the results here, 58% uh, of you said contractor that installs the new pipe also tests the pipe. 18% said outside engineering firm, 14% municipal field crews, and finally 10% independent contractor. Thank you. Interesting. Well, we're, look, uh, you know, the last thing has to be Innovise ElectroScan because that's where we're at here. But it, it, it brings up this, this feedback loop. How do you do that? And I think having integration into your, your CMMS um, and, and to be able to have all of that data in one place now, um, I think to make, to, to influence a decision, I think we want to start influencing the decision 
while crews, while rehab crews are still mobilized out in the field. I think the, the day that we have to wait six months or a year or wait for flow monitoring data for two years to get a similar event, I think those days are over. And I think having this real-time connection to our database with Innovize, I think is the right way to go. And, and really what it's doing is, is and, and what we are finding in a lot of case studies is, we're finding just, just using the power of Innovize and Info Asset Planner, where one section would be if we just used CCT to pick the rehab area, um, if we just look at a hydraulic uh, assessment only, like what Fell reads from machine, we're now looking at a totally different basis. And uh, you know the ability to come up with leaks, you know, looking at those things as a low-hanging fruit, we can ask the question: Well, look, if we want to, if we want to spend the dollars, um, and our goal is 80% reduction uh, in our in our infiltration. So we basically want to, you know, take our worst pipes, work on those first uh, until we run out of money. Until we hit that 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 time, that will give us the biggest bang for the buck. So, you know, as we as we kind of finish this section here, and as we look at that 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 process, uh, we certainly don't want to have at the end of this. This is a this is an actual uh, CCTV report by certified operators, uh, zero uh, 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 grades. Uh, filled with poke and hope, uh, they did at least put in uh, 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 miscellaneous general observation, those MGOs that are out there. Nothing went into the calculator. Um, and so easily, these, these, these uh, problems that when you really look at these things um, can be off the radar. And if you don't have the time, if you aren't looking at the video, uh, you know, like I love to do, I watch TV every day. Uh, so I still like it. Uh, so uh, it, it's, it's going to be a problem. So Really now what we're judged is are we going to wait until now we wait till we get a flow monitoring result? Um, we do a lot of things with the smart covers and flow meters are out there a lot of companies that uh, offer this We have now been calibrated to uh, at least in, in our case uh, ISCO uh, 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 flow meters, but do we want to wait a year and a half or uh, with tools like this? Can we actually get same-day results within hours? Um, can we have data uploaded right after something is a test has been made in the field and have my Innovize uh, uh, asset planner personnel look at that data and see what we had before, see what the, re the, the flow is after and see what that reduction is uh, while those crews are still out there. So, so that we can make this part of the contract. So we're, we're glad to be here. Of course, we've been doing a lot of work in the sewer side of the shop. Um, no secret, we have been doing projects in pressurized pipe, and that's not just uh, uh, in force main, but also uh, 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 water pipes as well. Uh, this is where we're going to be uh, taking uh, electroscan, acoustic, CCTV. Again, big fan of this, especially to help me navigate through those. Rumor has it, all the leaks go out, uh, and pressure so we can do that. So um, and I think a very powerful next step, get familiar with the sewer side, and then you'll have your asset, your your Innovize asset tool set there, uh, ready and waiting uh, as you as you move forward. Uh, awesome. So Sean, I'll kick it back to you. All right. Thank you, Chuck. Do you see benefits in adopting Fell? Our responses are yes. We already use Fell. Yes, we've learned a lot and would like to be connected or contacted. Not yet. Let me think about it. And finally, not really. We plan to stay with what we have. We'll leave the polls open for about 30 seconds and then share the results. Thank you. Well, uh, Chuck, you've definitely given us uh, some things to, to think about for sure. So um, uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of innovative, disruptive technologies, uh, forcing us uh, us uh, old guys to kind of think of, think things through differently. Well, you know, and, and here's the other thing. I think, I think, you know, we've made, uh, you and I collectively probably, I don't know if we've made all the mistakes, but in just seeing kind of what we've, what we've done for these things, I think it's a, you know, it's a, it's a good ne next step for where we are in the, in uh, the industry. And it yeah. looks like 47% of you said, not yet. Let me think about it. 22% uh, yeah. said, yes, we've learned a lot and would like to be contacted. 22% said, yes, we already use Vell. And finally, 10% said, not really. We plan to stay with what we have. Thank you. Well, we, we are, 
I was going to say, we are a cautious industry, right? Um, many times, if, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, you know? And uh, that's, uh, but it's always, always good to keep our minds open. Absolutely. All right. I think, uh, I think Tim, you're going to show us uh, some of this in action. Yeah, absolutely. So thanks, Chuck and uh, David, for kind of setting the stage and uh, giving a lot of great information on the use of Bell technology and um, InfoAsset Planner as well. Uh, so at this point, yeah, I'd just like to show all of that kind of in action here. So let's see. Yeah, so just for anyone who's not familiar there with InfoAsset Planner, there we go. Uh, Info Asset Planner is an asset management tool uh, by Innovise, and just a couple slides here before we jump into the uh, data to give people out there kind of the main idea behind the purpose of the software and its core workflows. The main idea behind Info Asset Planner is you've got all of this data you're using for linear networks. Again, GIS information has been mentioned already, hydraulic modeling results. Uh, Innovise is definitely known for that uh, sewer storm flood or uh, distribution uh, modeling and hydraulic uh, modeling information bringing that information in as well as work orders and inspections, something like Hanson databases, uh, CityWorks, Lucidity, uh, all these different CMS work order systems, pipe inspection data. And so today we're really talking about ElectroScan and that Bell technology and integrating that information into InfoAsset Planner. Uh, but then any other database uh, information, you know, if you've got one-offs in Excel or Access databases, uh, the idea is you want to bring all this information together to make better decisions. We're all making decisions on capital improvement project planning, where to inspect, uh, where our operation and maintenance dollars should go. But if we can get all this information in one spot, uh, we can make better decisions, that's the idea. Plus, uh, Info Asset Planner really, again, takes your CMS, your asset management, kind of to the next level, right? Your standard CMS system is great at organizing data, uh, getting it all tied into one uh, spot. Um, filling all those data gaps. But then the question is, well, what do you do with it uh, once you have all this data organized in one framework? So that's where Info Asset Planner and takes your asset management uh, plan uh, to the next level and says, you know, this is the optimal, uh, this is what comes next, if you will. After gathering all this information, this is what we do with it, and then feed that back into your CMS uh, database there. So with that, I will leave the slides here for a second. And uh, here we are within Info Asset Planner. And right now on my screen, you can see I've got a couple of uh, pipes here on the map. Um, and so both of these pipes have been inspected uh, with BioElectroScan data. And what we've done is we have brought this uh, ElectroScan uh, FEL data from critical sewers into your GIS. This is really one of the first benefits of this partnership is we're able to directly integrate. Uh, we mentioned that REST API connection. We're able to directly take that data that's being stored in critical in critical sewers, excuse me, uh, offsite and integrate it in with your database of record a lot of times, uh, that GIS information. So this is the kind of user ID and token you would use, and you'll see this later when I bring in new uh, FEL information to uh, my Info Asset Planner database. Well, basically what we're seeing um, here is the condition assessment window, which traditionally has been used to kind of visualize that CCTV information. In the case that you want to really reduce infiltration uh, and that INI, &I, uh, you might be bringing in uh, FEL data. And so you can see this FEL information on the pipe. You know, you can query these defects. So you're maybe only seeing those greatest leaks here. Uh, so I'm only seeing my leaks, you know, 7. 7 GPM, 10 GPM, those larger leaks, or if I wanted to, I could see, you know, all the smaller detailed links, uh, leaks on that pipe. Uh, that same kind of scan graph that Chuck has been showing, this is also able to be uh, completely brought in to Info Asset Planner. So again, the idea is uh, not only do you have access to this information on critical, su critical sewers and on the cloud, but it's integrated uh, into your GIS as well in your Info Asset Planner database. Um, so once this information is within InfoAsset Planner, again, you can leverage it to use all the analytical tools and functions that our current customers and uh, future users perhaps uh, know and love within InfoAsset Planner. Uh, this includes things like the consequences and likelihood of failure uh, parameters. And if you wanted to use 
uh, that fell uh, electro scan information to further inform your risk analysis here. So in this case here, I'm looking at a likelihood of failure generated from um, or brought in from my uh, electro scan database here. So here I'm looking at uh, that approximate flow uh, for each of my pipes from that electro scan information and applying a likelihood of failure uh, you know, if that pipe has more leaks versus uh, fewer leaks, uh, depending on the flow and the results from that particular pipe. So that's just one example of how we can use it uh, in the risk analysis tool. But beyond that, um, these decision trees within InfoAsset Planner are really at the core of, again, answering that question. Great, we've gathered all this data, we've put it into GIS, it's in you know, our ESRI environment within and InfoAsset Planner that our uh, organization is really comfortable with. Now, again, what comes next? So uh, here's an example of a decision tree that is actually um, looking at a lot of electro scan information. So again, there's our survey import. Instead of referencing CCTV in here, we can simply say, you know, pull in my electro scan information. So if we look at this particular decision tree, maximize this here. Now we've got all our pipes here starting at start. And again, just like a standard decision tree within InfoAsset Planner, we start asking our data questions, right? So we're asking, you know, did it have an ElectroScan survey done on it? If it did, great. Let's look at all those results that we pulled in from critical sewers. You know, what's the length of defects? What's the uh, gravity kind of of those defects? Are they large? Are they small? What's the average GPM kind of value that was measured by ElectroScan? and determine maybe we need a liner or just replace that pipe as a whole. Uh, if it doesn't have electroscan information, which uh, can certainly be the case, um, maybe we're using the risk analysis to prioritize where should we be electroscanning next to get the most bang for our buck, right? So since electroscan is really looking at that I and I, we're really looking at the hydraulics of that pipe, maybe we wanna be prioritizing electroscan in particularly kind of low lying areas where the water table is higher. Um, where we might be having more I and I, and that's a little bit more important to us. So here I've put in uh, electroscan at low elevation, medium, and high elevations in here. And so we can see uh, what these results look like at the end of our decision tree. So if we open up the results from that particular decision tree in InfoAsset Planner, and get my rehab summary report down here. And if I sort some of these, I can see I have a number of ElectroScan uh, kind of suggestions for my pipes that come with cost information that we can uh, generate and apply. I have a number of these that say, you know, ElectroScan, this pipe is low elevation. So maybe uh, if I wanted to kind of prioritize um, these pipes and the ElectroScan on these low elevations ahead of time, I could simply select these, add these to my map selection here, again, leveraging the power of kind of Esri and GIS here. And I minimize some windows here. We can easily kind of see that these particular pipes are by the uh, river here. So again, that might be an area that has a uh, higher water table, more I and I. And so we could make kind of a project out of the pipes uh, that were suggested for electroscan here. And again, higher return on investment since uh, they are in that kind of low lying area. And again, um, because we're working in GIS, because InfoAsset Planner is so tightly integrated, in this example here, you know, I'm simply using my uh, manhole or pipe invert elevations to find these low-lying areas, but you can imagine you could use background GIS uh, and start to use, uh, pull in all your data to really find these low-lying and uh, best areas uh, that you might be electroscanning. All right. Last thing, so say we do this rehab, right? And we, we talk about, and Chuck mentioned, um, kind of being able to review on site. So say we do that. Um, we come out, we electroscan that pipe. Maybe then we say, you know, okay, let's to get the reduction we want. Let's say we want 85% reduction of INI on that particular pipe. Um, you know, we want to check that. We want to make sure the contractor who did the lining actually was able to hit uh, that 85% goal. So what Chuck's, Chuck's mentioning when he says, you know, we could use InfoAsset planner as this tool to really check that that's actually occurring is if I come back up here and I have my pipe that's been electro scanned and maybe it's been uh, lined now but I've done a you know, post electro scan on it say I import I again uh, ping uh, 
my critical sewers database. I say import. I've now started importing those new post inspections. So those are now imported. If I run that same wizard in Info Asset Planner, I then I'm taking this ElectroScan information, actually, again, tying it to my GIS by running it through the wizard so that now when I click on this pipe, I can review and kind of see, again, now I've got two inspections on this pipe. It's gonna bring up the most uh, recent inspection here for this particular pipe. And so if I look at the defect view, I can see on this pipe, you know, great, maybe I hit that uh, reduction. I can see I've, I can kind of compare both inspections on this particular pipe. So I can see the pre, you know, was very busy, had very many uh, defects. And I can see the post, uh, this contractor, uh, you know, did a great job here. Uh, however, maybe on, you know, the second pipe, I can pull reports mm -hmm. from it. Info Asset Planner, and I can see something, uh, you know, like the data we're seeing here at the bottom where I've got my two pipes, uh, and one of them hit that reduction, actually got to 99% reduction, but the other uh, only made it to 82%. So on site there, you know, as quickly as I've been just showing it right now, you can bring in that information uh, and actually you know, uh, check that that reduction hit what you were uh, looking for uh, very quickly. All right, and so again, where we're seeing ElectroScan used, um, I guess we got one more polling question over to you, uh, Sean, before I go into an actual case study where we've seen this. Great, thank you, Tim. And finally, do you have a prescriptive risk-based decision tool for rehabilitation planning? Our responses are yes, we use Info Asset Planner from Innovise. Yes, we use a different COTS tool. Yes, we use spreadsheets. No, we do not have a tool and probably should. Finally, don't know. We'll leave the polls open for about 30 seconds and then share the results. Thank you. I'm, I'm guessing a huge amount of spreadsheets out there. Just a guess. It's a reliable tool. <laughs> Nothing like the power of GIS though. Mm -hmm. All right, and 29% responded with yes. We use Info Asset Planner from Innovise. 25% said no, we do not have a tool and probably should. 17% said yes, we use spreadsheets. 16% yes, we use a different COTS tool. And finally, 13% said don't know. Thank you. Well, good to know. Perfect, yeah, thanks for everyone for those responses. So again, kind of a way we've seen this put into action, again, using InfoAsset Planner and uh, ElectroScan and putting these together. Uh, Chuck mentioned earlier, Sydney Water. This is uh, a video, short video, directly from kind of their implementation and pilot project with uh, these two softwares. So you can see again, just as I was showing the survey on their, you know, actual pipe, uh, you can see all of the uh, ElectroScan information, uh, which was brought in there. And again, you can go back and forth between that 3D view of the pipe, even jump to uh, media. So again, you can store all of your uh, inspection, CCTV and ElectroScan um, within Info Asset Planner. And again, uh, just a live case study kind of, of how I, we can take this ElectroScan information and uh, start to put it in kind of a decision tree format here. So again, we're looking at a separate ElectroScan inspection on another uh, pipe here. And let's see. Uh, this one, sorry, excuse me. Uh, and you'll see that this, this decision tree uh, being shown kind of created here using that ElectroScan information. All right, so this is directly from Sydney Water Project. I know you uh, were working on, Chuck, with our folks down there from Innovise um, uh, in Australia. Uh, so a great success. Um, so this is kind of the first effort, uh, kind of putting these technologies together um, using some of these features we just came out with in InfoAsset Planner. I've been under development for a while. Um, so really looking forward to seeing this continue to grow. Um, and, and be realized elsewhere as well as kind of this is this is the optimal tool for kind of looking at reducing that INI. 
the 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 guys the Innovise guys down at City Water, uh, uh, Terry, Terry Bork and you know the other folks were just fantastic uh, assistants to us and and uh, the, you know looking at the data and presenting that I think it's a it's just a wonderful user interface I think that Innovise has created. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, uh, thanks. Thanks, Tim. Uh, great. Great to see that that in action. Some some really yeah. good stuff there. Um, we're we're all we're at the top of the hour. We have actually quite a few questions have been rolling in. Um, we will get to every single one of them. Uh, we may not have time uh, this morning uh, for this, um, but we will answer every single one. Um, it's part of the the best part of these webinars, but. Um, looking at the questions, and Tim, you're kind of showing, you know, prioritization based on, you know, kind of the highest GPMs. Um, you know, Chuck, uh, you know, there's so many parameters that affect, you know, the soil, the pipe material, you know, all these conditions. There's certain assumptions of fell. You, you know, it almost seems like uh, we're, you know, uh, finding almost too many leaks, right? You know, it's, is it overestimating? So. You know, would you would you always trust the uh, the the highest GPM readings to fix everything, or you know, what 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 do you comment about that? Yeah, you, you know, just the 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 approach that uh, that Tim that Tim just did uh, in looking at elevation. So, uh, if I had, for example, if I had the largest GPM according to Fell, is that the first pipe I would fix? And I would say absolutely not. Um, you know, by by looking what to, and to borrow your term, looking at the hydrogeologics of where that pipe is located, uh, I think we all want to go and take care of the low hanging fruit first. So the biggest bang for the buck is going to be at the lowest elevation. Uh, and and again, some people don't have the invert elevation to their manholes. Maybe it's a spot elevation. Um, but you know, where where I'm looking at at rehab uh, and people not considering the the elevation uh in it and i'm not seeing any rehab that's done in the bottom third of that elevation there's going to be a problem there so i think i think having having that data is coming in it's good but you really have got to put that into perspective to the the location the area um the the other side of that question though is also uh coming up with with a, a gpm I mean, this is kind of the holy grail. No one's ever done. There's a good reason nobody's ever done it because it's it's hard to do, um, and and we've really used this as an estimate, uh, and we've applied basically a one percent gradient and a one foot head, uh, where what Electroscan does in low voltage is define the size of the hole. What is that size? And so by using the same calculation across all, we know the ones that are larger or not. Um, fortunately, we had a we had a great engineering firm. Uh, SAHO of St. Paul have a wonderful city example uh, in uh, uh, in Racine, uh, Wisconsin, uh, that that did uh, flow monitoring before rehab and after, and did fell before and after, and uh, wouldn't you know the percentage reduction was almost the same. The big difference is fell was able on a pipe by pipe basis to know which one of those pipes had 100% reduction, and some pipes which had a negative. So this is like negative oil pricing. Which pipes were actually leaking more? And we could actually look at the video and we could see those, those taps were not properly reinstated. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's very good. To, we've done enough of these things to kind of see where that, where that um, comes into, into play. Well, yeah, I mean, like what we were kind of talking about before we went, uh, you know, live with the broadcast here, um, in in many any you know of these diagnostics uh you know quantification is 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 yes what we all search for um but there's almost the you know this uh this uh qualifying aspect of of magnitude right and so while the number may be affected by all sorts of parameters you know that magnitude still causes you to to you know ask you know what's going on right i mean so it, it it's always a good indicator this the the technology the science seems sound of you know there's something going on i i may not pinpoint the exact gpm to a decimal point but but i i kind of need to to take a look at it look great point and you know the reality of this is if i have bad pipes on one end uh, i've got a couple of good sections of pipe in the middle and then i've got a bad pipe on the other end if that if those pipes in the middle have very little to no leakage, we know if we if we just fix those two outer pipes, 
I'm going to push all of the infiltration down. I'm still percolating down to the ground. So, so when I draft up this project to actually go out to bid to fix, I'm going to do the whole area because I know that's what I've got to do. I know that infiltration is going to, uh, is going to travel down to the next pipe. So the reality of this is I've got to have some good ops guys, some good CapEx engineers really uh, uh, looking at these from a business angle and seeing what they want to do. But I, I think some of the, some of the cost, costing that Innovise has in their engine, in their back engine with the model, uh, I think it's just a, a right time, right place for the solution. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, again, we have, we, have, we have tons of questions uh, that are coming in. We'll make sure we answer all of these. Um, definitely, you know, there's there's a whole topic here on on laterals that that you know they can indeed be a source of leaks. Um, you know, uh, I I had my fair share of, of some of that. So, um, you, you know, well, in your house or you personally? <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> we're not going to go there. Um, okay. <laughs> I, I I personally have aging infrastructure, so yeah, um, you know. But uh, I, I do think there's some, I say, some really good questions. Um, you know, uh, some some nuances to all this. And you know, just like with Innovise and our, our hydraulic modeling, you know, we we all of our all our calculations are, are rooted in science. But it, it comes to calibration. There are system anomalies, there are geographic anomalies, hydrogeologic anomalies. All of that has to be configured, and, that, and that's why honestly we we love having you know consulting firms use our tools as well because they have the the expertise to kind of put, you know, all those parameters um, um, together. So um, I know uh, I'm sure Sean's calling, you know, telling us to uh, to, to call it quits. But you know, I, I guess um, in in all of this, you know, these interesting times, um, you know, COVID-19. You kind of started us off with that. Um, you know, I know Innovise is 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 definitely out there supporting our customers. We have lots of Lots of our, our utility, our municipal workers are actually, you know, at home spending more time with our software, and and so we're 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 definitely they're taking deep dives and learning a lot. Um, how about how about Electroscan? How are you guys doing during during this whole COVID time? Yeah, you know, we we actually were scanning uh, CIPP this morning. Um, we did an install last week in Tennessee, so we've been working. Everybody knows they've got their jobs fixed. I think it's the comfort level for this. But, you know, it's a very trying time and, and you know, internationally uh, uh, travel is, is, uh, is been disrupted. So, you know, it's, um, uh, you know, we just want everybody to be safe, stay at home and, and uh, um, you know, follow the guidance of the health professionals. Yeah, yeah. Well, like I say, we've got um, lots of questions on pipe materials, service laterals, uh, how accurate's the GPM, uh, are you guys, you know, how fast can you go? Uh, uh, lots of good questions that I know. Again, um, just uh, respect everyone's time. We we allocated the hour. We're 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 past that now. So we will answer each and every one of those questions. Um, and you have, if you have more, if you didn't have a chance to kind of submit your questions, you you've got you've got my email, Chuck's email, Tim's email. You know, give us a shout out. Let us uh, let us know uh, what's on your mind and and um, you know, uh, we're 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 definitely in Placid Planner. We're looking at all sorts of new technologies to bring in to give you uh, all that additional information. And and uh, Tim's Tim's demonstrations are just going to get even more complex. And I can't wait. So um, anyway, I, job, I think. Yep. Yeah, uh, so thank you, Chuck, uh, for being with us today. Always informative. Um, I always enjoy your presentations. You always make us think. Um, and uh, Tim, Tim, great job showing software. And uh, you know, actually, so Sean, I know we're we're running a little bit over. I'm going to turn it over to you to to kind of wrap it up and uh, bring us home. All right, sounds good. And I'd like to thank David, Chuck, and Tim for presenting today. And we would like to thank everyone for attending today's webinar. If we did not get a chance to answer your questions today, we promise to get back to you with an answer. Thank you, and have a great day, everyone. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Thanks. Thanks again, guys. All right.